Okay, now we're going to talk about reference angles. So first, let me define what a reference angle is before I refer to this down here. If we look at this drawing of the unit circle right here, we have an angle theta that's drawn in that quadrant. And we've looked at a table before. Uh, in a previous video, I showed you the table of values, and you have special angles between 0 and 90. Well, eventually what we're going to be getting into is we want to find sine, cosine, and tangent of angles that are not between 0 and 90. And we want to find out a way to do that. Our table is limited. It only goes up to 90 degrees. A reference angle is going to be a way for us to find the exact value in different quadrants. I drew an angle theta right here, and, and that would have a, a certain point on the unit circle. Maybe that might be a special angle like a 45 degrees, for instance. So with that being here, this part measured from the x-axis, that would still have a value of 45 degrees, but then it's down here in this quadrant. Now the relationship between those is if I were to draw a triangle and have a triangle connected just like this, I have one triangle drawn up there and another triangle drawn down below. Remember that the, like the cosine value, that's the x value we talked about, the sine would represent the y value. Now, the x value would be exactly the same in the first quadrant as it would be down below here. The y value, the value itself, the distance would be the same, except the only difference is this one would be a positive y value and this one would be a negative y value. So that space in between there has the same numerical value, but we just have a difference with a minus sign. So what a reference angle does, it says if we want to find the exact value somewhere else, not in the first quadrant, then what a reference angle does is it basically is an angle that would have the same numerical value as what it would be in the first quadrant. Again, uh, we're not taking into account the plus or minus signs. That's the actual numerical value. And that numerical value we can get off of our table. So we can take any angle in the other quadrants and we can always take it back to an angle that would be drawn in the first quadrant and that's what we're going to use the reference angles for. So eventually we're going to be getting into finding the trig value at any angle around the unit circle. So now we're not just limited to the first quadrant like we were before. So again, the table only goes up to 90 degrees. We want to be able to expand that and be able to do more. That's what the idea of a reference angle is. A reference angle uh, would take you always back to an angle in the first quadrant. So again, if I had an angle down here, the angle drawn in standard position would go all the way around to here. So that would be some angle between 270 and 360 but it would have the same numerical values as if I have an angle in the first quadrant between 0 and 90. So there are different ways that we can, different formulas that we're going to use in order to find the reference angle depending on which quadrant that you're in. And I have all of them written here for you. So first, if you're in the first quadrant, the formula for it is 180 minus theta, or if we're going to use radians, it's going to be pi minus 180. What that does is it uh, allows you to find the measurement of an angle here. Now this measurement here, if I were to draw the line in the first quadrant, it would have the same exact y value and the x values would differ by a sign. But again, I'm ta it's taking us back to an angle that would be equivalent to one in the, the first quadrant. And you find that by using the formula, 180 minus your theta. Now the reference angle is labeled here on all three pictures and what you notice is the reference angle is the measurement from the where the angle ends to the closest x-axis and we have it here we have it there and we also have it on this one all of them are measured from the x-axis and they have these certain formulas so that's how you do it if it's in the second quadrant between 90 and 180 if you're between 180 and 270 that means you're in the third quadrant we have a formula for that one the reference angle is going to be theta minus 180 or theta minus pi depending on uh, if you're going to use radians or degrees. And that would be listed right here. So again, the idea is even though I have an angle that's actually in the third quadrant, it basically would take me back to an angle that would be in the first quadrant. I just have to deal with the plus or minus signs, but the numerical value is the same as the one here. So by doing that, it would allow us to still use our table. That's between 0 and 90. Reference angle will always take you back to an angle between 0 and 90. This one here, 360 minus theta if you're in the fourth quadrant. Going all the way around to here would be the regular angle and this little one measured to the closest x-axis, that would be your reference angle. And that right here would 
kind of correspond to the original picture I drew there. The reference angle may be uh, an angle that's more than 270, between 270 and 360. However, the, the value measured from the x-axis here is the same measure from the x-axis there. So it's going to have the same numerical value as if it would have been in the first quadrant. Now if you want to look for a way to have all this information provided in one spot, I, I gave you this little picture here. This picture is like a shorthand and that actually has all the reference angles on one drawing. Now notice if you're in the first quadrant, you don't even need to use a reference angle because that angle was already between 0 and 90. So that angle itself would be the reference angle. There's no formula for that. It's just theta automatically would be uh, your reference angle. If you're in the second quadrant, 180 minus theta we talked about. If you're in the third quadrant, theta minus 180 degrees. And if you're in the last quadrant, 360 minus theta, 360 degrees. So that would be give you a, a picture that shows again where all the, depending on which quadrant you're in, it'll give you the reference angle. So the idea here is what they'll give you, they're going to give you an angle and if they're going to, they want you to find the reference angle. These are the problems that we're going to be talking about next.